Guys, so we're going to move on to plan for assessment and on our help document that will be on our next page. You can also look at the actual one that you will be completing. There's the actual one that you will do. And if you complete, you open it correctly with Acrobat Reader, you can actually see you will be able to type into these columns um, and then submit it online for our e-learning. Now, I just want to go through our guide. All the, the stuff again was uh, uh, summarized here on the right hand side. If I'm looking at our guide here, I can see immediately it's a confidential document. It's something to do with processing incoming and outgoing talent for phone calls. So I'm going to say someone working on a sweet sport. I can see the unit standard number appears there. The title of the unit standard. I see it's an NKF level 2. So I know it's not, you know, it's not metric level. It's an it's a entry level um, uh, unit standard and it's a total of three credits so immediately from three credits I can do my calculation I can say it's about 30 no uh, notional hours uh, if I want to split it in 50 50 is about 50 uh, 15 hours th uh, theory 15 hours practical I can even ask the learner listen how long did you practice on a switch board and it tells me two three hours I can say no 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 uh -uh. it doesn't add up to our notional hours Okay, some general rules of the assessment. Uh, this is general rules for any assessor. Number one is no pencil, no tapex. Never, ever, ever, ever will you have pencil or tapex even on your table or on your pencil case. No empty blocks. If there's one empty block, then the, the setter is going to say the document is half completed. No single words or abbreviations on their own. Now, uh, I always say a nun is something that belongs in the church, not in training. Now. So no single words. You can use abbreviations, but not on their own. At least two or more words, wherever you're writing, except now when it's a date for, you know, of course. Time costs money. Don't waste my time. And you will also see we give you some time, you know, time periods that uh, we tell you you should be able to complete this document in five or ten minutes this entire plan you should be able to do in at least 10 minutes if you do it too long longer than 10 minutes and you're taking too long now also if i can do um, a 10 assessments a day and i give me a hundred rand assessment i make a thousand rand and if you only make two assessments a day you're only going to make 200 rand so time costs money we don't uh, 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 we can't afford it you know to to waste some time Provide feedback of a bogus learner. Now, what is a bogus learner? It's quite a, actually a common uh, thing. Uh, a, a bogus learner is a learner that doesn't exist. So a training provider signs up a learner. And this poor student is doing the course. He don't even know he's doing it. Now, I just think there is no manuals. There's no printing, no stationery, no catering, no venue hire fees, no facilitation. It's just pure your profit someone sitting in the office and complete all these work for a learner again we need to provide proof it's not a bogus assessment so you must constantly provide proof that you and the learner were there well you can take photos uh, you can have witnesses signatures um you know when you're going to assess the learner you can tell him to sign there and uh, if you completed the document, keep a copy of the document, any any type of evidence that you can confirm that you and the learner was actually there, you know, this assessment actually took place. And then also we see that the learner says and the moderator all use different kind of pens. And I think on your one, they actually printed it out. Yeah, yes, there we have it. A black pen is for a learner, a blue pen is for a assessor, and green pens is for a moderator. And that uh, red pen is for the boo-boos that happens, you know, when you have a learner to go and write in a blue pen, then the assessor is going to carry on with the red pen. And if you have another boo-boo, then I don't know, then you'll have to go to get some of these purple pens. Um, I see uh, Waltons and stuff has got these funny color pens. Okay, so that is our uh, color coding that we're going to use here. And uh, uh, if I'm looking at this page here, I can't see that the assessor actually look at this page because there's no ticks there. So we always want to see a blue tick. Uh, you can just make a correction here at the bottom of the page. Or if there's any instructions, you can make your ticks next to it to show that you actually worked through it 
and you know that uh, I need evidence that you actually uh, you know even looked at this thing. I'm going to go over to the second page of our plan. You will see typically assessment plan has got two columns. The first one is the date that I've, I've completed it, and the other column is uh, added up a resources. So there they tell it could even be someone's name. So in column number one, they want to say identify a learner and an opportunity to assess them in the workplace. So there you must go and get yourself a learner. You can put in today's date in there um, and write the learner's name in there. And just remember no single words. So the learner's name and surname because we need at least two words in every single column. Number two, do you have scopus and assessor to assess this unit standard? Now, what does scope mean? Scope means you have, your, well, first of all, you're a qualified assessor, but also you, the assessor approved you to assess someone uh, in this unit standard. So the CETA is going to look at your CV and they're going to say, do you even have receptionist experience, at least two to three years ex uh, reception experience? When they say they're happy, they're going to give you a letter, and that letter is only valid for three years. So you always need to update it. So they're just going to put in today's date and say, yes, I have a valid letter from the theater, uh, you know, to allow me to assess a learner in this unit standard. Uh, number three, by when must the uh, assessment be completed? Now, well, if uh, train you can ask you to assess, say train you can say to you as the assessor, this must be done within seven days. So I'm putting in the today's date and uh, um, as per training provider must be completed within seven days. Number four, review of the training provider's assessment policy and procedure if not familiar. Okay, let me ask you one or two questions then. How many times can a learner be reassessed? I don't know. Normally, it's about three times. Um, also, what, what is the procedure if the learner comes unprepared for assessments? You know, this, this is all type of questions that we need to ask. So we need to look at the training provider's policy. Is the training provider going to pay you the assessor for every reassessment? What is the fees involved? So just look at the policy, make sure you're familiar there. In that case, um, I will also maybe some of that discuss it with the learner when I'm going to meet with the learner and say to him, listen, yeah, you can't fail more than three times. You need to make sure that you come prepared for assessments. Okay, number five, do you have a valid agreement in place with the training provider? Obviously, if you contract it, if you're not permanent, then you definitely will need a contract with the training provider and just make sure that contract is still valid again next page that page ask us number six ask us to go and look at the actual assessment uh, instrument the test papers now if i'm going here to my actual um, assessment guide that will be in pack number three if you remember correctly so if i'm going to go to pack number three I just want to quickly scroll. There's that one. The first one is an observation. So I'm going to look at the learner while he's sitting on the sweet spot and answering his telephone call. I'm going to go through all these questions that I need to assess and see if there's any maybe clues, you know, things that uh, um, I need to remember. Also here with the assessment instruments. Uh, or instructions that tell you what must be in place. So there it tells you you need to switch sport unit message pads and all those kind of things. So that I'm going to type in here and say, listen, yeah, I must make sure that all these things are, are ready. You know, the switch sport are organized uh, stuff. There's uh, our next one is, um, uh, let me just go on here. It's an interview. Um, so I'm going to ask the, quiz, the learner some questions and the learner will have to answer me back. And then the last one is a written test. So I'm going to look at all that stuff and see what I need to organize. Now, just remember, the learner was trained. He knows that he must have message pads there. So it's not my responsibility to make sure the message pads are ready. I'm just going to, when I have a pre-meeting with a learner, I'm going to tell him, listen, yeah, you were trained. When I get there, you make sure all these things are ready. And, you know, uh, they, that when we start with the assessment process, it's, you know, it's correct. Otherwise, you're not going to be not yet competent. So there's some, a, a pre-checklist, you know, to, to make sure what you must organize and what you need to check with the learner that the learner also have ready when you get there. 
Number seven, and I think number, let me go, eight and nine will go to, uh, together. And obviously, you need to now notify the learner to come to a pre-meeting. So um, sometimes you want to include the stakeholder, employer, or the training provider also. So we need to send him maybe an, an email. I need proof that he received it. And I need to so I need to notify to come on a certain date, at least 24 hours later. It could be longer, but a minimum of 24 hours. So I'm requesting the learner to come to a pre-meeting uh, with me. And in that pre-meeting, I'm going to discuss some stuff with him before I'm even going to start with assessment. And then number 10 and 11 and 12, we're also going to ask, you know, where is the pre-meeting and is it helping you with the planning? Now, just remember, we said evidence. We want evidence. So if you're going to type a, a, an email or write a learner a letter or send him an SMS, or you're going to tell him in person, I need his signature. So I'm going to need you to attach anything here to confirm that you actually notified the learner. So attach the email uh, or the letter or any evidence, attach it as a separate file or a document to this assessment.